before so what I did is I went down to my freezer and I have these gallon bags of frozen tomatoes that I've been picking from our garden for the last week. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them plus all of the ones on the table which I'll show you and um, yeah so I'm just trying to plan ahead for tomorrow to make tomorrow easier and quicker. Yeah so this is just uh, part one of the planning ahead so I'm going to let these sit out and then I'm going to put them in colanders and drain the liquid out before I'm, um, I start tomorrow. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, so it is the next day and um, I have all of my tomatoes sitting overnight kind of draining a lot of that extra liquid that happens especially when you freeze tomatoes. So I'm going to actually make uh, pizza sauce today. I decided I'm going to use my um, tomato strainer so it takes off all of the takes out the seeds and the, the peels. So I bought this one off of Amazon last year. Trying to pick the right one of these for your needs is kind of a hard thing. I spent days looking <laughs> because I didn't want to spend too much because I wasn't sure am I going to use this all the time or not since I've actually only been gardening for probably you know three four years and um, so I really wasn't sure if I was going to need it a lot so I didn't want to spend a lot of money um, I would love an electric one maybe one day but for now this is perfectly fine so I did see mixed reviews on this one when um, when I was purchasing it um, okay I got to figure this one out it's been a year since I used this. I'll tell you the rest of the story in a second. Okay, so this goes that. So everything's going to come out this way. And I'm going to hand crank this way. So, is that right? So I want to put it that way. So we'll go like that. Is that right? I think that's right. Okay. Sorry. I have to talk to myself sometimes to figure it all out. So is that enough room? I think that will work. So this is like one of those ones where it suctions to the ground and that's where a lot of people had problems is theirs didn't suction. I haven't had any problems with that. See, that's like I'm really, I'm not trying to break it or anything, but that's, that's perfectly fine. And now, I know this was a guard for something. Just trying to figure it all out. Okay, this goes. Oh, okay. So this just goes, sits in here, and then the handle, as that screws in, And hear that noise? That's what we're gonna hear. Oh wait. Okay, it stopped. Hold on. Oh. No, I messed up. Oh, you know what? Oh, I'm glad I looked. I'm gonna just rewash that that's a little rusty. I thought it was pretty dry when I put it in, but I don't want that on my tomatoes. So I'm gonna give it a little cleaning. Okay, that's better. So yeah, these do go together very easily. They go inside of each other. Just gonna have to hold it there. And then this goes on top. So it's it's pretty simple. And sorry if you hear any noise in the background, that is just my 
scanner going again. Maybe I just didn't have it completely up the hole. Ah, there we go. Okay, that's right. So this takes me a second to remember. <laughs> the sauce is going to come out the sides, the seeds and the um, the peels are going to come out this side. So I have to get another, um, there's not going to be a lot of room and this tray is fairly small so I'm going to have to continuously empty it. Now what small bowl can I use? So this is my bowl. Um, I'm going to end up putting, after I run this through here, this is what I'm going to dump it in. So it's going to go into this and then I'm going to just keep dumping it into there. And uh, I think I, I think it's 13 cups. I'll have to reread the recipe, but I need 13 cups of puree. So I've been draining these all night. Oh, actually I, I didn't tell you, finish telling you the story of this. So. Um, yeah, so the suction is what people had a problem with. I haven't had a problem with it. It's very simple to set up. You just have to, had I reread the directions, which I didn't. Um, yeah, so it's very easy, easy that way. And so these um, tomatoes have been draining all night. Well, as many as I could fit, as many bags as I could fit in the colanders. I think I had four bags that didn't, so they're in there now. When, um, when you freeze them, they get, very soft which is perfectly fine for this kind of recipe I'm just gonna make it into sauce so I can actually just sit here and pull off some of these and then I'm just gonna throw them in there now you can also keep these and dehydrate them and then grind them into tomato powder and then use that powder in like soups or stews if you want to give it more of a tomato flavor I did that last year it did take quite a bit of time um, I'm sure if we, I had a freeze dryer, that would be so much quicker, but this took a long time. I laid them out on towels like this and then dabbed them and then I have a dehydrator, at least I have that. And uh, yeah, so I did that. I don't think I'm gonna do that this year, I just don't. I don't have the patience, I think, this year sometimes. <laughs> I know I have so many projects I have to get to that the little things I, I think I'm going to pass on. Plus, I still have some I haven't used from last year. So I could just throw this in, but it's going to save on me tearing it apart a few extra times. So, so I even did it like this even for when I made salsa last year. I made, I think, 80 jars of salsa last year. And this is how I did it. I still froze it. And... Um, we don't really enjoy the big hunks of tomatoes in ours and if you don't either then this is a great way to do it and it just saves saves so much time and uh but if you like chunks this is not the way to do it for sure so i would just um kind of puree the actual tomato part but i would keep the onions and stuff whole Okay, that's a good amount to start. Then you have this if you want to push it down too. I'm gonna get very good arm exercise in this way. I'm going to get a spatula too. That way I can pull this stuff out. So this is the sauce or the paste, I guess. And then see how much is here. I'm going to put that through probably two more times. Once you get going and used to it, it actually isn't all that long of a process. It's just getting used to what you're doing. 
and now that I pulled the actual skins off first, this is not getting stuck. Even though that's that's kind of the purpose, but I'm getting more. See how much more is coming out the front because I put it through a second time. This, I'll empty this here. So I'm going to put this through one more time. Not a whole lot comes through the third time, but still more that, that we didn't have before. is that so we ended up with that little bit just from the first so I'm just going to dump that in the bowl and continue on this I'm going to dump because I'm not I don't want to put that through again so this I'm going to put aside cleaned up from that um, I still have to measure so what I'm going to do is I'm in the um, Bernadine complete book of home preservations and I am doing the pizza sauce on page 364 if you have that book now I need 13 cups of tomato puree so I have to measure that out still and um, let's see I'm going to use I don't know if that's big enough. I'd put it straight into the pot, but it says to only put half in at a time. Okay, so there's two, four. Six and a half is what I need to start. Okay, that's six and a half. I'm going to put that in the pan and turn it on. And 
and a half. Okay. So that was pretty good. So that was eight one gallon bags that, that covered this. So this will be extra. I'll put it I'll put it in the fridge for my next project. Okay, and then we're gonna move over to the stove. So it's spitting at me. Spit all over my towels, on my floor. So this is just the first half. Whoa, there it goes again. This is just the first half. We're supposed to bring it to a boil. It's set over high heat, but I just have it on a little past medium and yeah, I don't want to get burnt. So then this part is going to take a little bit of time. We're going to, this part has to come to a boil and then you add one cup at a time until all the rest of it is. So I still have the other half right here. I'm just going to add one cup at a time. So I will bring you back once all of it is at a boil. Okay, it is at a light boil and everything is in it. So now I'm gonna add a half of cup of store-bought lemon juice. I'm gonna try not to let it come to a too big of a boil because it spits it everywhere. Okay, here's the lemon juice. And then we're gonna add salt, pepper, oregano, and garlic powder. Now we're supposed to let it boil until it looks like a store-bought spaghetti sauce. It already looks pretty much jars in the oven at 200. They've been in there for uh, at least a half an hour. They're going to be water baths, so I have my, I'm using my pressure canner as my water bath. I just don't have the, the the pressure gauge on here and it's just gonna sit on top and so it's coming up to a boil as well I am going to it calls for putting them in 500 milliliter jars but anyways I'm gonna put them in the um, large jars instead of the 500 milliliter jars just because whenever I make pizza I'm always making five full pizzas and it pretty much takes two of the 500 milliliter jars so I might as well just save those jars for other projects that I'm going to be doing and uh, put them in the one liter and it'll save on a bit of space too actually. So I will likely, my garden has so many tomatoes in it right now, I will probably be able to make quite a few more batches of these. Plus there's tomatoes on sale, I might, do, I might buy some as well because there's a few new, new um, canning recipes that I would like to try so all right so I will I'm gonna let this go for about five more minutes and let everything else heat up okay so uh, now I'm just taking out my hot jars and um, I'm going to fill these up leaving a half inch headspace and um, so like I said the recipe does call for the 500 milliliter jars 
and if you feel safer using those then just stick with that but I did this last year like I had mentioned and I feel perfectly fine perfectly safe doing that and I am going to add a little extra cook time so at 500 milliliters it calls for 35 minutes um, in the water bath and I added um, an extra five minutes um, this took uh, three quart jars and not quite a 500 milliliter jar as well so I actually decided not to put the 500 milliliter jar in there and I just let it cool and put it into the fridge and um, yeah so I will I used that up within the week So it is two days later, and um, yesterday I spent the whole day making um, pizza sauce. I was lucky enough to have my husband help me yesterday, so saved he saved me hours of work. But um, I pureed um, all the tomatoes that I had done yesterday, and I for didn't pay attention that um, the Creole sauce that I had planned on making yesterday was just to chop them into hunks after you peel them and I pureed the whole batch that I did so I made a ton of, of pizza sauce here yesterday which took all, the whole day from morning until um, just about bedtime anyway so I ended up with two four six eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen quart sized jars of pizza sauce yesterday which I am thrilled to have one of these jars should do um, every time we uh, make pizza so that's fantastic so I got started already it is just a little it is 7 30 in the morning and I've been up since like 5 20 or something so I started early and I've already peeled this much tomatoes so to remove the tomato skins easily just put them in a pot of boiling water with either a slotted spoon or a spider and uh, let them sit for roughly 30 seconds to a minute and before you do that you put a little X with a knife on the bottom of the tomato and here I'm just checking them to see if the skin will come off easily and they needed a few more seconds so when they um, are ready to come out you put them in a bowl or a pot of freezing cold water um, you can put ice cubes in it I did not and it worked the same for me um, I just change the water every couple rounds to uh, colder water but um, I didn't have any ice cubes on hand just peels right off Now this, uh, the Creole sauce, I've never made it before. This is the first time, but it just sounded good because it was spicy and, and my husband loves spice on anything. So I thought I'd try something different because he puts Tabasco on everything. So I thought, oh, let's try a little different of a sauce here. So it calls for 11 cups of coarsely chopped and peeled tomatoes. Oh, and by the way, I'm still in my, the same book and I'm on page 365 for anyone that that has the book by the way it's a fantastic book if you don't have it I suggest you at least go to the library and um, check it out to see if there's a few recipes that you would enjoy anyways it and this this is supposed to fill nine eight ounce jars which is the 250 milliliters oh i was thinking it was the smaller ones okay so i almost got the wrong size jars but okay i gotta find those 
So I'm just going to see how far we are with what I have because maybe I can make like a double batch or something. So I'm going to start chopping these. And I think I'll put them in this big pot just, just to be safe. Sip of coffee. And where did I put my knife? So, oh, I think I'm going to move my book just because it just got a little tomatoes on it. is really bad in here. It's been raining for the last two days and it's a very, very dull day today. So I have extra lighting on, but I'm not sure how that's looking. Okay, so 11 cups. Okay, to the pot we're going to add some green onions, green bell peppers, but this is a mixture of green and red because that's what I was trying to use up, red wine vinegar, Chester Sire sauce. Oregano. Hot sauce we're using Tabasco. Just going to bring this to a boil, reduce the heat once it's at a boil, and let it simmer for roughly 40 minutes. The jars are hot. I had them in the oven at 200. Um, the water is boiling in the water bath. So you're supposed to leave half an inch head space. The, the tomatoes were a little too chunky, so I just used a uh, 
I just used a rice masher to make them a little less chunky. So it was definitely on the spicier side. And of course I had just taken some, <laughs> tasted something sweet a few minutes before I decided to test it. So I have the exact flavor I haven't, I don't know quite yet, but I will definitely make this again for sure because I'm sure it's something that uh, we will like. I definitely didn't need such a big, a big pan for that. I'm going to need two layers in here so I have a second um, one of these and I'm going to put on top so I just put five of the wide ones on the bottom and put that on I do need, I do need to add a little bit more water to that so I will do that now Okay, so you see the two tiers. They probably all would have filled. They probably all would have um, fit on one layer if it wasn't for I used the wide mouth ones. So, anyways, they boil. Bring it to a boil, 20 minutes, and then this is done. Okay, so next, so I'm all cleaned up from the from the first thing we made, and now I'm gonna continue peeling the tomatoes. I'm gonna, I still have these two to finish. I'm gonna make a barbecue sauce. It's not the, the one I was planning on making today, but I realized uh, there are two of the ingredients I didn't have and I didn't notice before. So I'm gonna make just a standard barbecue sauce and I'm gonna double batch it. So I need um, 20, so 40 cups of cut tomatoes. So I'm gonna cut all of these and then I have two more half bushels, but I, have to wash those so that's what I'm going to take care of now while our Creole sauce is in the canner. So we are on to the barbecue sauce. Um, we are on page 257, same book. Um, this is a couple step process. So I am doubling this um, recipe. Oh, I got my book wet. Um, so I put 40 cups of chopped tomatoes in there. That was quite the process. Then we got some chopped onions. Um, I actually decided to use the ones that I previously chopped and they were in my freezer just to save a little bit of a step today, which was much needed. Garlic. Okay. 
Hot pepper flakes. Celery seed. So we're just going to bring this to a boil and then we have to put it through some kind of blender to get the seeds out. So I'm going to bring this to a boil and boil it for roughly 30 minutes before the next step. So now this has uh, cooked for about 30 minutes and now it's time to run it through the mill to get all the seeds out. So I have this one here. No, because this is hot, I don't want to put too much in. In case it splatters. Let's see here, how do I do this? Like this. if I put like a little oops, a little plate over top just so it doesn't splatter. Smells really good. All right, so I'm just going to continue doing this until it is done. And I have a large, big metal bowl here that when this bowl gets done, I'm going to dump it in until I can put it all back in the pot again. Okay, we are back. So after I took all the seeds out, we had to put it back in the pot and it had to boil down about a quarter of what the amount was. And it has pretty much done that. It's gotten a little thicker. So now we add in a few more spices. So we got some brown sugar. vinegar, lemon juice, salt, dried mustard, ginger, now it calls for ground mace, which I do not have, and it calls for cinnamon. I'm not adding cinnamon to my barbecue sauce, nope. So, so leaving out two spices is only gonna change the flavor. It has nothing to do with safety, so it is perfectly fine to do that. And now all you do is let it boil down for a bit longer, so I'm gonna gather a good hour. I'm just gonna leave the lid off and help it evaporate a little bit more. But it is definitely thicker than it was, but it still could use a little bit more. Okay, the barbecue sauce is done. So they go in uh, the 500 milliliter jars. I'm supposed to get six of these because I doubled the recipe. One recipe is supposed to get you 
um, three. So I'm not sure. This is not quite as thin as I would like it, but I've been boiling it down for hours. And you're supposed to leave a half inch head space. I will get these in the canner. just finished with the barbecue sauce and I would say that we did pretty darn good today um, I'm so happy to have more of this stuff and I really like that I got to try some new recipes I always like to try a couple of new um, canning recipes every year just to try new stuff and they could be our new favorite but anyways I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next video take care